we have not revealed this revelation to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, for it to be a means of your distress. We haven't revealed the rules and regulations to make your life difficult. No, they are there as a reminder for those who are conscious of the Almighty. It will make your life easier. Yes, there are rules and regulations and a lot of them, but they are there to create discipline within your life so that you enjoy the life with purity, with goodness, with calmness. Immediately he knew this is from the Maker. Do you know why? He had that question. And many people have the question to this day. Why does Islam have so many rules and so many regulations? They had the question a long time back. The time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, in the Makkah period, when rules and regulations were not even fully set at all. Most rules came in Medina. So Allah responded. And as a result, he says, you know what? He shed a tear. He says, take me to Muhammad. Peace be upon him. They saw that this man softened up. They decided we're taking him. They took him to the place where they were. And as he's entering, he says, O oh, Messenger of Allah! Because, you know, when he was entering the door, he had his, there was a bit of blood on him. He had his sword with him. And he's coming through the door. And Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib is waiting at the door. It was the house of Al-Arqam ibn Abi Al-Arqam. Radiyallahu an. And on one hand, they know of the prayer that the Prophet ﷺ made for the guidance of this man. The other hand, they also know this guy is very, very dangerous. So they don't want to harm him, but they want to be prepared in case he harms anyone. So Hamza says, Hada Umar. He says, This is Umar. He's coming in. Oh Allah, if you intend goodness from this man, let him accept Islam. And if he intends any harm, let it become easy for us to overcome him. Now they're waiting. As he storms into the room, he says, Oh Messenger of Allah. Now, the minute you say, Oh Messenger of Allah, what does it mean? You're confirming something. He would have come in and said, Oh Muhammad, astaghfirullah, peace be upon him. But that's his name. But he comes and says, Ya Rasulullah. As soon as he said that, everyone was softened because they knew this man's already acknowledging he is a messenger of Allah, messenger of God, right? He says, Inni ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna abduhu wa rasuluh. He says, I bear witness there is none worthy of worship besides the Maker, besides Allah, right? And I bear witness you are a messenger. You are a messenger of God, subhanallah, of Allah. And immediately, immediately, there was great takbir in the room and everyone was excited and, and, and subhanallah, things changed. Why do I raise this? Let's go back to the reason. The reason is when there was an enemy, the Prophet, peace be upon him, made a good dua, it was accepted and the man came. The same thing happened where people prayed for those who did bad, the cartoons or the videos or anything else, people fighting uh, Muslim women or Muslim men or Islam or anything to do with it, try the good positive prayer. It works. It works. There's so much that has happened in the last few years and so much that is happening. On one hand, like I started this talk by saying, you know what, there is a lot of negativity, but I want to give you good news. There is the other side of the coin, a lot of positive happening, a lot of it. How many of us are more conscious of things we do? How many of us reach out? How many of us for the first time we're reaching out to people we never reached out to? How many mosques have opened up for open days explaining to people what Islam is all about and that it doesn't teach what the small band of people are promoting? That never happened. But it was an opportunity when it arose and people did it. I was in Blackburn yesterday and they were explaining to me how the mosques are raising funds to give to the hospitals amounts that are needed for various apparatus and beds and a few of these specialized chairs and so on. And where does it come from? With the name of the mosque, it's there. This has been donated by Masjid this and Masjid that. And it's such a lovely feeling to see people, humankind, of all faiths, races, inclinations, be they whatever, however they think. And here they are at a time of need. Doesn't matter. Come, we're going to help you. This didn't happen some years back. And I think it's a very good model.
Subhanallah. For the hospital, the mosques collecting money for hospitals, Muslims, non-Muslims, I don't care. I just know that it's going to another human being, they're going to benefit. And you know what? When we're sick and ill, we go and we benefit as well. Sadaqa jariya, that's what it's called. A charity continuously providing. You know, the best of charities are those that last a long time. They call sadaqa jariya. Jariya means it carries on. So if you planted a tree, you know what the hadith says? Every time any human bird, animal benefits from the shade of it or the fruit of it, you get a reward even if you've died. Did you hear that? The shade of a tree, you get a reward. Who sat under it? An old man, he wasn't even a Muslim. A guy or a person or an animal or a dog or a pig. You thought of it? Pig is an animal. Yeah. Who got a reward? The one who... The one whose intention when he planted that tree was, you know what, I'm doing this for the sake of Allah, and I'd like everyone and anyone to benefit from it. If that is the case, and a tree or a well, when you drill a well in the middle of Hawaii, where you don't even know if Muslims exist, for example, and people are drinking water from there, it's enough, you're a human being, you've done it. You've done it. Amazing. Can I tell you, the Muslims are very charitable. And right now, what's happened? We've become more and more conscious of these projects. And we've been reaching out to people in a way we haven't before. And it's having an impact. So I was telling you, this brother from the Netherlands, one day he decided, subhanAllah, you know what? I, and it's somebody's dua, I promise you. He started looking into Islam. Every time he looked into it, he felt something. He felt something. But he was involved in the whole movie. Until a day came and the movie was out. And people have seen it and the, the people died because of it. You know, because of how Muslims are. When they want to protest something, the protests become violent. And the violence becomes lethal. And that results in the loss of life. But the matter you're dealing with hasn't been solved. This is what I was saying earlier. That they, there's no need to become hooligans. Not at all. You can promote what you want. You can say, I'm sad about it. You can say, I don't like it. You can discuss it. You can raise it. But do it in a respectful way because that will bring people closer to the truth. They'll understand. So this man says, a day came. I kept on feeling that this is the truth. This is the truth. Allahu Akbar. Amazing. And he went to the mosque. He went once. He went again. And he declared his shahada. I'm talking of very recently, just a few years ago. A few weeks ago, one of his buddies declared shahada. All on his own. And here we are becoming so apologetic, we don't even want to have anything to do with Islam. I know people who've changed their names from Khadija to Dija. <laughs> May Allah forgive us. Not legal names, but I mean, they don't want to be called that anymore. It's a weakness. Proud to be Khadija. Tell them Khadija, yeah. <laughs> kha, it's the Kha. Even teach them how to pronounce it. It's good. If they know you're a lovely person, they won't mind calling you Kha, Kha, Khadija. It's fine, you're a good person. You're a lovely person. They wouldn't mind calling you Muhammad. Look at our brother Mo Salah, for example. Muhammad. Just an example, there are so many others. They, they don't mind calling him Muhammad, do they? They don't. If they've seen a good side of a person, nobody, it's human nature. You don't, you're not really worried, but the thing is, the opportunities that you and I get to rise and shine, we don't sometimes. We show the opposite. So this guy accepted Islam, the other guy accepted Islam, and I want to tell you something, my objective is never to convert someone never that's in the hands of the almighty guidance is in the hands of the almighty ma alayna illa al the quran says our duty is just to convey a message just let you know look this is the truth this is what i believe this is what it is you have any questions well here are the answers that i can provide for these questions or maybe i'll find out for you and that's it leave it at that let them make their minds up they may they may not this is what the Prophet ﷺ was told, and these are the verses of the Qur'an. Never did Allah say, you know what, you've got to convert the people, you've got to revert the people. He always says, it's in my hands. 
فَإِنَّمَا عَلَيْكَ الْبَلَاغُ وَعَلَيْنَ الْحِسَابُ O Messenger, for you, your duty is to just convey the message. The rest of it is up to us. We'll do it. I'm here today. I promise you, one of my intentions is to improve myself. To improve myself. And thereafter, to try and say a word or two that can perhaps, you know, make people feel a little bit more motivated, inshallah. They call it a motivational evening. Yeah, it is. In all honesty, it is. You notice the topic we have is just a motivational topic. Yes, it's faith-based, but it's motivation, mashallah. So I want you never to lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Allah is great. No matter what you're going through, that will come to pass. It has to come to pass. Don't lose hope. Keep going. If you think you have a problem, there are others who have bigger problems than you. When you want solution to your problems, start helping people who have issues. And you'll see how blessed you are. I promise you. Help people who are in difficulty, in hardship. Help them. Even in a small way. Even if it's through a prayer. Even if it's reaching out to them with a smile. Reach out to them with a smile. It's an act of charity. It will release their stress and their, you know, their thoughts, negative thoughts, just through a smile. Subhanallah.